Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're gonna build the lure. In fact, it's an original design I discovered that I designed maybe five or six years ago and never built. I came across this old notepad where apparently I was designing a truss, I don't know what for. And then on the next page, there was a series of designs, of lure designs, many of which I already built. Then there was this one way down here that it looks like I was intending to call a rib bone. And then on the next page, I found some additional drawings with a little more detail. There's that rib bone kind of shape and then a top view and then an end view for each end. So I guess I really was intending to make this lure and it looks kind of interesting. In fact, it looks a little bit like a Zalt Wobbler, which is a lure a lot of you guys or some of you guys have asked me to actually try to replicate and look into what makes it work and what makes it swim the way it does. Now the Zalt Wobbler is kind of a funky lure in that it looks like a regular wooden wobbler with an integrated lip, right, built into the face of the body. But the tie and eye is all the way to the front of what would be a diving surface, which makes it a really kind of odd lure. But I think we can use this rib bone shape as an experimental platform to see what the angle of that tail, which is a flat surface, does to the lure action as you're reeling it in. So let's get a drawing on the board. Now this is my original concept, but instead of having a tie on eye all the way at the tip of the nose, my intention was to have one just up from the end of the lure and then hook hangers in the typical locations, except for the tail, where typically you'd have it right off the end. I want to get it inside a little bit because this tail is going to be a little bit of a paddle. This is what I intended the lure look, to look like looking down on it, where there's going to be a flat surface right in here. The tie and eye there somewhere, and then sort of a flattened body as you go back, and then the tail forms a little bit of a paddle so that we can angle it to affect the action. Now a lure like this typically is going to be a lure that actually sinks, and I'm going to make this one sinking, but not too fast. As usual, I like my lures to sink moderately slow, maybe one and a half to two feet per second. And if you'll remember some of the dynamic forces discussion in the crankbait masterclass I did, and if you watched me make this super deep diver, you'll note that there's a little bit of a surface paddle back there too. The idea is that as you pull from the typical point where you tie on, the area of the diving bib that extends forward of the point where you tie on is forcing the lure to angle downward, which actually can reduce the distance it'll actually dive. But by having this little surface on top, it offsets some of that rotation and keeps an angle that's a bit better for deeper diving. Now imagine if the tie on eye was all the way at the tip of this, the lure is gonna wanna flop this way and find some weird dynamic equilibrium that maybe won't twist and spin and maybe will just be sort of an oddball movement. But I wanna experiment a little with that and see what the tail angle will do to that action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna straighten this tail out just a little bit we'll still have that flat paddle tail, but we're gonna have a joint about two thirds of the way back to the tail, somewhere around there with a pin in it so that this can rotate on that center pin. So I can rotate it down, rotate it up and work with three or four, maybe five different angles to see what kind of action we can get out of it just by playing with this tail. Before we can actually cut this out of wood, we need some dimension. All right, that should get us started. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little longer to account for these hinges. I think I'm gonna need about three eighths of an inch. So I think I'm gonna give myself an extra half inch here, maybe a little more. I can always cut a little off. So the initial length of the blank should be around four and a half, maybe four and five eighths. So I'm gonna use this piece of scrap cedar that's one inch thick. I'm gonna cut about an inch and a quarter strip out of this plank. That's more or less the shape. Of course, there's gonna be a little bit of modification as we shape and carve. Now I just need to do the shape on the top. And 
And since I'm going to cut the side profile first, I'm going to take this drawing off the top and we'll save it for later. Once I've got this side cut out, I can lay that one on top and cut that one out. Now it's just a bunch of hand shaping. And as usual, I'm gonna be doing that on the sander here. And it shouldn't take me too long. It's pretty close to the right shape. I'm just gonna round off all the corners, except for at the very flat spots on the front and on the tail. Everything else will sort of blend in and hopefully we'll still have a nice symmetric shape when I'm done. All right, I've got it pretty doggone close. Symmetry is pretty good looking straight down at either top or bottom. Pretty happy with that. And the general shape is about right. The little tail paddle is pretty much as close as I can get it. There's a little chip out of it right here. So I'm gonna have to fill that in with some UV epoxy so I can get it nice and uniform one side to the other. But it's pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with it this way. I've got the edges that I want round, round, and still some hard edges up front. There's not a whole lot of volume to this lure, so I'm not, I don't have a whole lot of space on the inside for weight. So I'm gonna have to be pretty accurate at calculating exactly what I need to get this thing just to start sinking. All right, so before I actually weigh this and figure out how much weight I need to put in it, I wanna make sure I've done everything I'm gonna to do to it that's gonna take material off. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the eye socket and then I'll do whatever carving I'm gonna do along the head. And then when that's done, I'll cut it at the joint and we'll see what kind of hardware we're gonna need for that. And at that point, we can start figuring out how much extra weight I need to put in it. So I like just to sort of just sketch in my concept for the carving since my carving is probably going to change a little bit as I carve. But I just sort of eyeball the location of the gill plates around the eye and try to match it on the other side. Coming along, I think, a little bit of sandpaper, and we can make this look halfway decent. It's going to take me a little while, so I'll get back to you when I'm closer to being satisfied with this carving. All right, 
right, so it's now the dreaded time to cut this thing in half. Well, not quite in half, but about a third of the way from the tail. And I've already kind of drawn a little sketched in arc to shape this tail. I was going to cut it with a handsaw, but I think this is going to be the best way to get a nice controlled cut. All right, now I need to carve out a little sort of inner joint here. And it's got to go horizontally, which is kind of opposite of what you do for a swim bait. All right, that looks pretty good. Now the other end. This one has to go in there, so I've got to round it off a little bit. And I'll do that on the belt sander. All right, I think that's got it. That was quick work on the sander. Now I need to embed a hinge plate in there and get some kind of way to fasten this thing so it'll pivot, but I can hold it wherever I want. All right, so as a hinge between the two pieces, I'm gonna use this little piece of aluminum. I've already got a hole drilled for the uh, hinge pin. All I gotta do is shape it so I can embed it in the wood right here in this joint. And then I'll cut a corresponding slot on this end so I can get it on there. a little more and it'll fit in perfect. So let me show you what I've done to this end so I can assemble it. I've got a little bolt and nut and I took the nut and ground it down around the edges so it would fit into a small hole. And that's why this is countersunk. And so this will thread into this nut and as I tighten it up it should pinch in on this hinge plate. Alright, now I've got all the hardware I need to uh, figure out how much weight to actually add to it. But to be able to figure that out, I'm gonna to need to know the volume of this lure. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to suspend it in water, but I need to seal it first. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this thing down with some polyacrylic, get it nicely sealed. And then next time you'll see it, we'll be weighing it in water. All right, with the container of water on the scale and the lure sealed and ready to go. I'll turn the scale on, it'll zero. Now I'm just gonna submerge the lure just enough so that my little clamp isn't in the water. I just wanna make sure I don't touch the bottom or the sides, which is pretty easy to do with this big cup. So we got 11.70. And I'll do the same thing with the little tail section. Shake, I like to shake it up a little bit to make sure there's no bubbles stuck to it. 3.28. So what that was is a direct measurement of the displaced water due to the volume of the lure. So if I add those two weights up, I get 14.98 grams. So that is actually the volume of the lure and the exact weight that that lure would need to be to be perfectly suspending, theoretically. But remember, that includes all the weights. That means the body, the hooks, that little hinge plate I put in there, and the hook hangers that I'm gonna put on. But since I want this to actually sink a bit, I'm gonna add 15% to this, and that gets us to 17.23 grams. So that is our target. And since I've gotta weigh these things again, I wanna make sure they're dry. So while that's drying, let's go ahead and prepare some foil. I want to foil just the face, just the gill plates and the carving area. So what I did was I took the uh, old drawing from the piece of wood that I cut it out of and I put it on the back of the folded piece of foil. And now I'm just going to cut out sort of an enlarged piece. And by doing it with the folded foil, I end up with two pieces that are mirror images of each other, one for each side. And I want to place these on there before I weigh it so I can capture the weight of this foil too. All right, I 
like the way this thing came out. Looks like something out of uh, Mexican wrestling. All right, now it's time to weigh these guys along with all the hardware. Que paciencia hay que tener para esta mierda. The two, the two hooks and split rings. These are the little twist eyes I made. There's two hook hangers and two tie-on eyes. And that little tiny bolt that holds it together. And we got 10.38. We're shooting for 17.23. So, so another seven grams or so. Let's try some of these split shots. That's it right there. All right, we're gonna have to find a way to get those three split shots into the body. Let's start drilling. All right, I got the holes drilled. These guys are ready to drop in. And then we'll cover this stuff up with a little bit of sawdust and some UV resin. And I don't mind overfilling it because it sands real easy. Then I just hit it with the UV light for meh, maybe 30 seconds and we're ready to sand. All right, that's pretty much got it nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna take both parts, wipe them down with alcohol and give them a really thin clear coat so we have something nice and smooth to paint on. I'm gonna try to put it down nice and thin, but I do want to cover up the seams on the foil. We've got a pretty good clear coat on it. I'm gonna wipe it down with alcohol. I'm gonna give it some kind of paint job. I think I'm going to give it actually a, a decent paint job, something that actually looks like a lure and not repeat the uh, crash test dummy paint job, but stick around to the end because that's when I'm going to announce the winner of the guess the weight of the bass contest. And that lucky guy gets this really nice mullet crankbait with a hand-drawn EA logo and the year I made it. So be sure to contact me once I announce who you are. All right, I think I'm gonna go with a golden Lake Shiner paint job. It's gonna be black on top, gold scales, maybe with a little bit of dappling of black in the scales, and then a yellow-orange belly. And I'm gonna make the, almost this whole faceplate gold. And I'll put a little red on the tail just to give it a little bit of a sense of those red fins. All right, I'm pretty happy with that paint job. What I need to do though, is make some markings here at the joint so I can sort of have it indexed. So I'm gonna put a little red mark on the main body and then a coinciding mark on the tail and we'll call that the neutral position. And then I'll just make a few dots along the rim here of the nut. This way I can kind of keep track of what position is the best. All right, not exactly machine quality markings, but it'll allow me to take a photograph of whatever the setting is that I like the best and then kind of put it back there again. And now I'm just gonna seal the paint with some Minwax polyacrylic to maybe three coats on it and then we'll put a clear coat on it and then we'll be out there we've got a beautiful sunny day and we'll go through the trials and see what works and what doesn't i'm not sure if i made it clear but i did 
put two tie-on eyes on this one all the way at the end just like that wobbler and one up here where i typically would put it and we'll try both of them with the different angles of the tail too and don't forget about the winner i'll give you that at the end too all right it's nice to have alumina back online so we can use her to do this stuff all right we're going to start off with the connection way at the tip just like the Zolt wobbler is and i'll start with the neutral position see what happens and then we'll play with it up or down pretty much zero action a little bit of a sort of a sway back and forth if you were going kind of fast since this is really trying to pull it down i'm going to twist this up and that's the first mark let's see what it does at this point i'm in disbelief at how straight this thing was going and i'm going pretty fast with the boat Let's see if we go to the next position up, the extreme position. And if that doesn't do it, then we'll have to go down. I don't know if I could design a lure this bent to actually pull this straight. This is unbelievable. That didn't work, so we're gonna go to the first mark downwards. Well, this is something a little better. We see some movement here. It's erratic. It doesn't have any really rhyme or reason, but it seems to move a little bit. So I decide now to up the ante here and bring the boat to its top speed and see what happens. And to my surprise, it starts to roll and comes out of the water. You know what, I'm not gonna waste much more time on that placement. Even on the downward sweep, it doesn't do anything. I'm gonna give it another notch over and see if that doesn't. Not really. It just sort of wobbles back and forth in a big arc that is almost useless. If you go a little too fast, it just wants to go barrel roll it. Of course, the uh, original Zolt Wobbler has a much bigger surface up front, so maybe they get a lot more action out of that. All right, let's switch connections to the middle of the head. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start off in neutral. This is a behavior that I sort of expected. Just a slow wobble. And it's a lot more predictable being pulled from this center point on that flat section on the head. I think maybe tweaking it a little bit up or down, maybe we get a little more. All right, that looked pretty good actually. It had a kind of an interesting little swing back and forth and every now and then it would jolt off to one side. So let's see what it does by going up one notch. Wow, this is disappointing. We're actually getting less action. That little bit of bend actually stabilized it a little bit. I wouldn't have predicted that. That's weird. It actually settled it down. Let's go down one. See if we can get some improvement. This is so strange. It actually stabilized. And it has a very tight little shimmy up and down at the tail. Let me zoom in. I thought I could see it from the boat. It's really barely perceivable here but it's completely useless. So let's go down one more notch. See what it does. I tried that setting, but it didn't make any difference. So I'll spare you the footage. So I gave it sort of an extreme bend downward. And here you can see it's more like a lipless crankbait. It's got a little bit of movement to it, but not really anything worth making again. Can't say I'm very happy with this at all. What this thing needs is a dive bib. And I think it would be a really cool lure. Oh, I almost forgot about the winner. The actual weight was one pound, 4.14 ounces. So 14, 14. And the winner is this guy down here. And I'll pin a comment on this video with the announcement of the winner. So the winner needs to go ahead and send me an email to engineeredangler at gmail.com and let me know how you want it shipped to you. At least it's pretty. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next video.